I think that the frontier always attracted people who were on the make. It always attracted people who were adventurous. They finally moved west risking. to California in 1850 with no family in tow. Three years after the Battle of Sacramento, James Kirker ends up here in Contra Costa County, San Francisco, California. His reputation travels with him. But don't just take my word for it, look. This is Rose Hill Cemetery, the place, we're told, where James Kirker was laid to rest in 1852 by his devoted Shawnee and Delaware Indians. Rose Hill's main inhabitants are Welsh miners, this being coal country. There was no mining here until 1853. Rose Hill Cemetery is for the miners and their families. There's not a grave up there that can be dated before 1865. Kirker Road is here, so somebody must know something about him. Somebody must know where he's buried. I have some phone calls to make. At the end of his story, James Kirker, true to form, is turning into a mystery man again. I do know that he was friendly with a man called John Marsh out here. This is Marsh's property on his Los Magalos ranch in Contra Costa. I made a call to the people trying to preserve this place. For them, Marsh is one of the founding fathers of the state of California. Well, I made that call. The call came out and was answered by Bill Merrill. Bill knows a thing or two about uh, Kirker. Now, Bill has come here with his lovely wife, Kathleen. Bill, where are we and why are we here? Well, we're at the Antioch Municipal Reservoir. It looks like from our tax records or from our old maps, Kirker was living on Marsh's property here. Oh. This was John Marsh's, Dr. John Marsh's property. Where we're standing now is part of the original Rancho Los yeah, Maganos. Sure, sure. And we think Marsh invited him to come because of, because of the bandits and rustlers that were attacking his ranch. And Kirker, being an old gunfighter, yeah. came to, to help Marsh and the Marsh in turn let him stay on, on, on the property. All the pieces of jigsaw seem to be coming together. Can we go up and look at the house perhaps yes, or what remains of it? Or Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Bill, you're pretty sure that this is uh, Kirker's last home. There's nothing here. How do you know? Well, this is an old 1871 map. Yes. And we know that a, that a, a skunk farmer named Samuel Adams took Kirker's ranch over when Kirker died in 1852. And on this old map of 1871, there's the Adams home. Mm -hmm. Now, if you plot that on a modern topographic map, here's the plot yeah. of, the, of, of the map uh, of Kirker's home okay. based on the old 1871 map. Yeah. And when you superimpose this on a modern aerial photo, here's what you come up with. This is what you've done. There it is. There you see. There's, there's, the, there's the reservoir superimposed on the... Uh, on the on the topographic map, yeah, and there's the there's the spot of Kirker's home. This tree here is is that is that tree there? A couple of them have been cut down. And that tree looks look it, it possibly could have been could, here. Could have been. Kirker it, was here. It, it is old. Now it's probably a hundred at least a hundred years old. The Adams property that gives a clue. The skunk farm also gives a clue as to what may have happened to Kirker. How it's, may have died. it's possible. Some people speculate that because. Uh, Samuel Adams, who wasn't making beer in those days, but was making skunk juice, was selling skunk it juice? Right. For, for, for cancer cures. Yeah. And so there's a possibility, some historians have speculated, that Kirker in his later years had cancer. And this was his giving his property to Samuel Adams was a way of paying off his debt. Given that one of the greatest ironies in the published accounts of Kirker's life is the fact that although he was the scourge of the Apache, the Indian killer, he was buried by Indians. Now, everything that I found out about the last phase of his life seems to be false. That's probably not true either. Can you shed any light on that? Light, the history is silent on that. Totally yeah. blank. I, yeah. So from this point on, you have to use common sense. If he wasn't living with any Indians here, okay. but living with a number of white uh, men and a, and a and a white woman who was who had several children. How do you know he wasn't living with Indians? Because we have the census records. This is this is James Kirker. He's he's head of the household. What date is it? 1852, right? October? Yes, 1852. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you notice this here, he, hunters. He's listed as as a hunter. Some of his some of the people following him are listed as hunters. Now look over here. 
the number of white inhabitants, yeah. uh, male, male and female, yeah. they're all listed as white males except for, for one white female who was married to one of the hunters. Okay. And here it says number of U.S. citizens over 21 years old, they're all listed as, as, as American all citizens. All white Americans. So Indian, but, but, but did they include Indians in the census? Yes, yes. they did. You think he may be buried here, but you have no idea. I would, in most, in, in 1852, we only had a couple of thousand people in, in, the, in the county. Yeah. And most people were buried where they died. So if you were me, would you assume that Kirk was buried here? My suspicion is he, he, this is where he's buried. Oh dear. We could be standing in James Kirker at the moment. Yes, oh. we could. You absolutely, you're absolutely <laughs> well, right. Sorry, Jim, if we are. Continued point two miles. Most people who drive the Kirker Pass Road today know nothing of the man after whom it's named. He was regarded highly here by respected people like Dr. John Marsh. From Kirker's own writings, and he wrote very little, there's no doubt he was an articulate, considered, and intelligent human being. No man's fool. Dear me, a couple of years ago you came across a footnote in an article you were reading about Apache Indians in the southwestern states of America. It mentioned a man from Antrim called James Kirker. You wondered why you'd never heard of him and found out what you could about the man from the scant information available. You discovered that he could have ruled the entire state of New Mexico, but declined. You found out that his fighting skills were respected by the very Apaches he eventually scalped for money that he was offered an elevated post in the Mexican military, but instead joined the American army and helped rout and kill the very Mexicans he protected from the Apache for years. Kirker was a man of contradictions. Larger than life, no ordinary man, yet here he is, unaccountably forgotten by history. You travelled thousands of miles across the USA and deep into Mexico on the trail of the life of James Kirker, hoping you might discover what made him tick. So, Mr. Anderson, my question to you is this. What kind of a man was James Kirker? Was he a good man or bad? Signed, Jerry Anderson. I felt I had to come back here one more time to the place where we think James Kirker's bones lie buried. He was a bit of a curate's egg, good in parts, but he wasn't an entirely bad man. Most of the things he did, the worst things that he did, like killing Indians and scalping them, were at the state's behest. One thing I'm entirely sure of is this. He was a very special person whose story needed to be told. After all, he was one of us. Thank you.